Hello everybody and welcome back to our YouTube channel. Why did I sound weird when I said that? <laughs> the YouTube channel. <laughs> so please understand when we say this that 500 days later <laughs> it has literally taken us 12 year to like create this what a nightmare it was like so we were going to do it where we were going to record this youtube video as well as our podcast at the same time we were like oh no let's not we'll do it separate so we've done it separate well we've done the podcast separate and then we made that many fuck ups that we were like oh, right now we need to edit it and then i couldn't edit it and then i've worked out i can edit it to basically we then try to record Long story short, so this YouTube video is about the Cecil Hotel. And um, if you want to listen to our podcast, it's practically basically the same as what we're about to tell you. But we do have a video on there about some of the people that we mentioned. I mean, we do have a podcast on our podcast channel about some of the things that we are going to mention. And we talk about them more in depth. You just have to go way back. So I just want to say before we start. Oh, hi, Emily. Hi. <laughs> Just forgot you were there for a little millisecond. Again, we're recording like this because we're still in lockdown. So just a warning, we will be covering topics of suicide, rape, sexual assault and murder. So if you are triggered by any of these topics, um, we suggest that this video isn't for you. All information was found using online resources. So we are going to be talking about the Cecil Hotel. If I look to the side, I do have some notes. I'm not perfect. Maybe it's annoying. <laughs> So the Cecil Hotel was built in 1924 by the construction company Weymouth Cromwell, and this was one of the largest hotels in the West Coast in the 1920s, standing 14 storey tall and offering 700 rooms. So you can imagine it's like, bitch, it's a grand hotel. And they made it look so posh, and the entranceway was so posh, because basically they wanted to attract, like, businessmen, they wanted to clientele was a lot of shmoney shmoney. So the first five years of the hotel being open, it con consistently had the clientele that they wanted. However, it also started attracting trouble straight away as well. Yep. And if you don't know about the Cecil Hotel, know that its nickname is kind of like the murder hotel. So if we go back to the first report of death, so the first report of death actually took place on June the 19th in 1926, when a retired mining employer, William McKay, died of natural causes in his room. Um, eight months later, in February 1927, a man named John, who was a long-term resident of the hotel, received an unexpected form of room service, which consisted of handcuffs. The murder hotel. So if we go back to the first report of death, so the first report of death actually took place on June the 19th in 1926, when a retired mining employer, William McKay, died of natural causes in his room. Um, eight months later, in February 1927, a man named John, who was a long-term resident of the hotel, received an unexpected form of room service, which consisted of handcuffs. Um, and he was also known as being a notorious burglar. So when the LAPD showed up to his hotel room, this made it the first arrest to happen at the hotel. And also in case you've just realised, I am actually lying in bed on the <laughs> side. I am lying as well. So if we skip ahead to April the 29th, when 33-year-old Dorothy Robinson was taken from the hotel to a local hospital, in a dazed condition that lasted for three days, her husband had died just one month prior following a nervous breakdown. Um, so basically, she'd taken the overdose with all of our different medications that she was on. Was it accidental or was this one of the first of many attempted suicides that would happen at the Cecil Hotel? So remember in the year 1929, it was the year of the Great Depression, which can I just say everyone have asked if they know what the Great Depression is, everyone has said no. Apparently no one took history. 
Do you know what the Great Depression is? No. <laughs> like, no one knows. Like, why? <laughs> Comment down below if you know what the Great Depression is, because apparently there's only me that knows about it. But anyway, so 1929 is the year the Great Depression happened. Um, and this really struck hard on downtown and Main Street areas. This slowly turned into a congregation point for things like sex workers, drug dealers, everything like that. And this area is now infamously known as Skid Row. So, of uh, course, I know what the Great Depression is. Emily, the Great Depression, Depression was the severe worldwide economic depression that took place mostly during the 1930s, beginning in the new United States. Like, I don't oh, know what it is. And we definitely haven't just Googled it. <laughs> I do not even talk about. So unsurprisingly, the Cecil lost much of his prestigious poshness, threatened by a double pro pronged attack of the recession and competition from other hotels, which were in better parts of LA. By the early 1930s, its reputation as a seedy establishment was solidified. For example, the case of George Ford in August 1931. He was a 40-year-old and he was arrested at the hotel for attempting to sell 10 pounds of opium for $10,000, which today is worth $156,000. The interesting bit was that the comment from the Los Angeles Times said, one of the most important captures made here in many months. This started a trend, if you will, for the number of crime cases reported in the newspaper about that hotel. So, all of these like crime stories start to pile up because the newspaper obviously saw hmm, bit tea, bit drama, tea time with Emily and Callum, <laughs> Let's start with loads of drama. So, earlier we spoke about what could have been the first attempted suicide. Um, well, actually on November the 16th, 1931, the LA Times report the first case of completed suicide at this hotel, which is sadly what well, obviously this hotel kind of got famous for, if you will. So. so, WK Norton, who was 46, had been missing from, missing for days, sorry, from his house in Manhattan Beach. And this was November the 15th, 1931, and he was found in his hotel room dead from suspected suicide by poison. He checked in under the assumed name of James Woolies, which is strange because why would you go to a hotel, check in under a different name, and then poison yourself? Because it's the Cecil Hotel. Nothing makes sense. Um, anyway, um, less than a year later, so not even a year later, a 25-year-old young boy named Benjamin, he took his own life with a shot to the head. Obviously, there's lots and lots of suicides that did happen here. We aren't going to go into every detail about them all. Um, but by the end of the 1930s, at least seven guests had made an attempt and only one of them out of the seven survived. And another puzzling case was that of Grace A. Macro, who was also only 25 year old. And apparently she leapt from the ninth floor window during the night hitting telephone poles. But during a fall, when she hit the pavement, a body was entangled in the telephone wires. But the thing that made this so puzzling is, obviously she jumped out of a window when her husband was lying there asleep, but she was with her husband and he did not know anything about it. Uh, sorry, it was a boyfriend. He was sleeping in the same room. He, he didn't hear like no commotion. He didn't think she was acting outside of the like ordinary watch normally was. So everything was fine, hunky-dory, go to sleep. And then next thing you know, she's launched herself out the window, wrapped in telephone wires and hit the deck. And sadly she died. So, on October the 12th, 1962, a lady named Pauline Cotton, 
age 27 and her husband Dewey had been attempted to rekindle their marriage so early that day Pauline made a surprise visit to Dewey at his work um, in hopes that they would sort out their relationship. Dewey then convinced Pauline to go to the nearby hotel and they'll finish off this discussion rather than doing it at work because obviously he didn't want like commotion going on at work. Um, they checked in a room on the ninth floor and it's unclear how long they spent um, in the, like on the room. Um, but what they do know is that Dewey went down to eat dinner alone. After he left to go down for dinner, Pauline climbed up the ledge and jumped out of the window. However, when she hit the ground, she didn't just land on the sidewalk. She actually landed on a man named George who was passing by. And both of them just died like straight away on impact. Um, the police thought it, it was some, they both decided to jump together and that was a suicide pack. However, they noticed George still had his shoes on, which obviously if he jumped because of the impact, they would have flew across to the other side of the street. Um, so overall, 11 places, uh, 11 suicides took place at the Cecil Hotel. Um, which has led to people believing that this hotel kind of puts like a curse on anyone that stays there, which wouldn't surprise me, to be honest. It's totally bizarre, isn't it? How like crazy. so many people have done it there, especially like back in the day. Yeah, like when it wasn't it's really strange. a known thing. Mm -hmm. like, like, it's just strange how it all ended one hotel was it like because obviously this is talking about suicide so we haven't spoke about murders yet but was it like because they'd heard of other people have i just went off there yeah oh. was it because they'd heard of like other people like committing suicides was it like novelty type of thing i don't mean that bad because obviously yeah. suicides are horrendous but was it because it was known for doing this people that people that's, the point, that's the place to go to do it if you're going to mm. do it so now let's take a look at some of the murders that happened here in the Cecil Hotel so in early September 1944 the lifeless body of a baby was found on the roof of the building opposite the police took in Dorothy Jane Puse age 19, who had been staying at the hotel for several days with her lover, who was twice her age. And basically, the police found out that Dorothy had woken up during the night and given birth to her baby. Um, she claimed that she thought the baby was still birth, and she took the baby out of the window, obviously killing the baby. Then she got back into bed with her fella, and acted as if, like, nothing was a matter. Like, didn't even be like, wake him up or nothing. Like, just did not say nothing. Um, also, I want to say that I feel like she didn't know that she was... It wasn't known that she was pregnant, though. Yeah, she just, like... Did know that. She just woke up with, um, like, when I've looked. Um, she woke up with the, obviously, labour pains, went in the bathroom because she didn't want to disturb them, and then had a child. Talked to baby. But the sad thing is actually that the forensics found that the baby was actually born alive. It, the baby wasn't actually a stillbirth. Um, so she went on trial, which ended in 1945, and Dorothy was actually found not guilty. And the reason they found her not guilty for was the reason of insanity. So they claimed she was insane and she got off with it. It's crazy. I'm sorry I keep touching my hair as well. It's just irritating the life out of me. Um, anyway, the next murder, um, it took place June 5th, 1964. This victim was named Goldie Olson. Um, she was a retired phone operator. The body was found in a room by an employee. She'd been stabbed, strangled and raped. Um, Goldie was known by the LA Times and remembered by as being a kind woman whose most violent act was to scare away the larger birds that had threatened her favourite. So just an innocent lady. And another infamous murder was the brutal murder of 22-year-old Elizabeth Short, who died on January the 15th, 1947. She was also known as the Black Dahlia. So her body was found in a vacant lot 
in a park about six miles southwest from the seesaw, and she had been horribly mutilated. And the LA Times claimed that she had a mouth slit with a knife three inches on either side while she was still alive. Her body was also found cut in half. And there was a lot more things that happened to her body, sadly, um, which happened after she was dead as well. So not only did they broke me torture when she was alive, they broke me torture when she was dead as well. And I was before her death, Elizabeth was actually seen drinking in the Cecil bar, which was inside the Cecil Hotel. But moving on to a murder that you might be more familiar with, uh, well, sorry, a serial killer you might be more known with, is during a period of 16 months from 1984 until 1985, the serial killer Richard Ramirez terrorised LA, which he is known as the Night Stalker. Um, he was a self-described Satanist and a devil worshipper, and he got the nickname the Night Stalker by the press. He murdered at least 13 women and obviously their partners and everything like that to go with them. He's had crimes of burglary and sexual assault. So after his arrest on the 31st of August, 1985, it, there was actually found out that he'd been staying at the Cecil Hotel. He didn't kill any guests or any employees, but he would use the hotel as a base. So he would, he returned to the hotel after killing his last victim. He got rid of his clothes that he was obviously drenched in blood. Um, he chucked them in the hotel bin and then he would walk through the lobby completely naked or either just in his boxes and just go up to his room on the 14th floor and just sit and smoke pot and listen to ACDC. Uh, there was nothing wrong. Like, he hadn't just been out killing people. It's just... The fears of making them into masks. No, you did that. Oh, wrong colour. <laughs> I was thinking, when did he do that? <laughs> yeah, but I can't believe that he like pranced into the hotel with not a stitch on and like everyone was like, how are you doing? Hi everyone, it's Emily here editing. I have this face mask put on because I look like shit because it's morning. <laughs> um, however, we didn't notice this happen with Callum when we were recording because it didn't happen when we were recording. It's happened a few times in the past and we've been like, oh my God, like one of us will say to either one, like you paused and then we'll just edit it out. However, we didn't know this happened. So we were just carrying on. <laughs> like I was agreeing with them and everything. And then obviously it catches up with itself. But then you'll he like, you hear like Callum, like as if like, very muffled when he, when he catches up to him speaking sort of thing so yeah i'm gonna go and get a priest to come bless my house now bye so another thing that the cecil hotel is probably is the most notorious for the story that's kind of gripped everyone a few, it happened quite recently, actually, in 2013. But I feel like this story is like, because it's probably the most recent one, it's gripped a lot of people, and because it's happened kind of in our generation, it's caught the attention of a lot of young people. Um, and also, they are making it into a Netflix series as well, which comes out on the 10th of February. Yeah. So, so this is the story of... Elisa Lam. So on the 26th of January 2013, 21-year-old Elisa Lam checked in at the Steer on Main, which is what they've kind of rebranded as, so it's no longer the Cecil Hotel, but it's the Steer on Main. And so she checked in there, and a few days later, on February the 1st, which is today. Oh my God, it is. Yeah, we got a day. Alyssa Vanish, Emily. I just got pins and needles. Right. Okay. Just there that previous to this video, what you're actually watching now, we'd try to record it before and you learn it's just go along. Nothing works, me and Emily, ever, 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 ever. And actually, 
I know this ha could have nothing to do with it, but it's just strange. But Emily was like, oh, is your light not working? Because I, I was trying to record through the laptop. And I was like, oh, my actual like main light's gone off. And then my lamp went off. And then my computer went off. And then yesterday, and then, I had heart attacks because we'd finished recording the podcast. And then we always FaceTime each of us straight after. And we were like doing it. And then if you know, we always try to get special guests which relate to our topics on our podcast. So we were like, right, let's go and find some people that have connections with this. So we were, Callum was on Instagram, I was on Twitter and we were looking through. And obviously when you type in, not just like people who stayed there come up, pictures of ghosts, pictures of the hotel, pictures of Richard Ramirez, pictures of everything come up. So the more and more we were looking, the more and more we were getting in our own heads. And we were like, um, so obviously we're both on first time. It was like maybe what, like ten o'clock ish. Um, no, I think it was later than that. Yeah. So we're on first time. Emily. <laughs> I've jolted my neck. <laughs> Emily. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs> no. I'm by one cry. Don't, 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 don't. Anyway. So on the 26th of January 2013, 21-year-old Alyssa Lamb checked into the Stay on Main Hotel, which is what they've rebranded as, and they're no longer called the Cecil Hotel, they're called the Stay on Main. Um, so basically, a few days later, which is the anniversary day, February the 1st, Alicia vanished, literally just disappeared, and some CCTV footage was captured during the early hours of the day. So basically, it showed Alicia... No, 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 <laughs> no. Sweat. I'm gonna have to start. I'm sweating. I'm sweating. So basically, on February the first, Lisa vanished, and there was some CCTV footage of her going into the elevator. And what happened is, there was she was like typing up pressing all of the buttons and then she was like the elevator doors were opening I'm shitting myself Emily the elevator doors was opening and she was like porting her head out and looking and then she was like so on the CCTV you can see her speaking to someone but you cannot see the person because like the camera frame doesn't reach out of the actual elevator all the way um, so you don't know if there really was someone there or not. But when they've looked at other CCTV, you can't say nobody else. But she's literally standing having a conversation, typing codes in, stepping back, typing codes in, stepping back. And it is actually like there's a, like a conspiracy. Thing. Yeah. It's like Japanese get yeah, where you're like, it takes you like you a dude? portal or something like that. Like you've got to go to, it's like a certain order. I've watched like videos, like YouTube videos on it and stuff. So you go to a different, um, so like you've got to do press the numbers in order, and I think it's like on the last one, or like one before the last one, someone's like there, but you're not allowed to look at them or something. And then on the last level, if you will, the level of the game and the level of the elevator, um, it takes you like a portal or another dimension I keep scaring myself because I can see my reflection in the door handle moving so it keeps catching my eye but um yeah so it, it apparently I don't know that I haven't got a clue what the name is but if you looked up this case and typed in or even typed in maybe the elevator game or something like that it would it's bound to come up well don't do it not yeah. if we're telling you to do it because you will we will be making a video about you a few weeks later because we're fucking cursed don't do anything that we do <sighs> We also haven't played the game. We don't advise doing that. We're but, just doing this is what she did. Well, this is what so she basically, did. played this game. She fucking disappeared. And then a few days later, the guests were like, the guests of the Cecil Hotel were complaining that there was like weird taste to the water. The water was like weird colour. And on February the 14th, so this was like 18 days oh. later, 
the hotel personnel were like, okay, we're going to go and check the water tanks on top of the roof. And basically, they found Alyssa's body floating dead and naked in the water tank. Now, the autopsy determined that the cause of death was accidental due to drowning. It was also noted that Alyssa suffered from bipolar disorder and that several prescription drugs were found amongst her belongings. However, there was no traces of drugs or alcohol in Alyssa's body, apart from a prescription drugs, which she'd act like, it wasn't as if she was just mutating them, like it was her drugs that she would take. She was like, uh, um, but it's just weird how, so she accidentally drowned. So why would she go up to the water tank on the roof? Like I've been to LA, I've been to this actual hotel, like, we're not in it, but I've been outside of it. Like there is plenty of places around where there's like pools and shit like that. Like if you want to go swimming, you can just go and swim. She, why would she climb up to the roof, take her clothes off? Like if you've, if you've seen the water tank, she's not only got to get into the water tank, strip her clothes off, but then somehow go from the water to close the lid because in water tanks, they're not filled to the top. Like there's a good section of it that mm -hmm. isn't filled. So like how she would have had to then close the tank on top, like on herself and I have a pain in my arm. But um, basically, so some people claim that it was her, she was just having a manic episode because of her mental health problems and that she'd gone up there and sadly didn't realise what was going on and this happened, which obviously is possible. Another theory is that she went up there hide out of the way because she was getting stalked within the hotel. That's why like the lift thing happened and she was talking to someone, basically the thing someone was following her, trying to harm her, so she went there to hide. And another theory is that she was drowned to death by ghosts or demons that haunt the Cecil Hotel, which that wouldn't fucking surprise us either. Definitely not. So, um, enough about ghosts. <laughs> Um, so in February 2012, mm -hmm. I have 2012 wrote down here, but I have a funny feeling that date's wrong. It must be because she, yeah. that happened in 2013. So in February of some year, <laughs> the Los Angeles City Council confirmed um, landmark stats to the Cecil Hotel. Making it, a, making it a historical cultural monument. Stop there in the end. Um, this award came after a bid submitted by Simon Barron Development, a group who required the building with intention of renovating it and then turn it back in to a high end boutique hotel. Because again, again yeah. But even before this official recognition, the Cecil had already achieved mythical status by America's collective imagination. So, 2016, the developers announced this major renovation was to begin. And it's meant to open October this year. That hotel is meant to open again. And Hun, I will not be visiting. I used to want to visit, but after these past two nights, it's off me. It's off the list. I'm okay. <laughs> Hun, I've been outside, but now I really want to go inside. But I will shit my pantyhose. I'd see. I would love to go in. Wouldn't be sleeping there. Not a cat in hell chance would I be sleeping there. But it would be interesting to do it. But because we live. in nine hours away or whatever 12 12 hours away and something's managed to then grab us i'm fine for now oh but i really want to go back me like i, I do want to go in and just have a look around but i'm frank like i would i don't want to like i want to poke my head through a few doors and just yeah. glance but i'll ship myself and i would need like loads of people there i would need camera crews just so <laughs> anything's on camera i would need like the lapd i want like a million and ten people there 
but I want I would dare just like walk through the entrance way and stuff like that. Um oh Goodbye. um I would dare just like walk through the entrance way and stuff like that, but yeah. I think I would rent the room for like obviously I would rent it as if I was gonna stay there, but I would be leaving, I wouldn't be staying there. I'm scared. So basically, thank you very much for watching this YouTube video. Like, people's going to be like, mm, clickbait, clickbait, but then realise there's no fucking clickbait. This is all <laughs> legit. Like, I've been haunted. And um, we probably as well, if we don't have little snippets from other people, we will have um, a special guest on po the podcast. Basically, there'll be a second part of this. Yeah. So actual be, people uh, who stay video, there. Actual, mm -hmm. and probably there'll be a second part of, well, there will be a second part of the podcast as well. Um, part two podcast, part two YouTube video. If you want to listen to our podcast, again, it is Tea Time with Emily and Callum, which you can find on Anchor and Spotify. Um, yep, we have our Instagram, which is Tea Time with Emily and Callum, and we have a Facebook page, which is Tea Time with Emily and Callum. Please don't die. <laughs> Bye. Thanks for watching.